Hello, my name is Shalinda Chaudhary and in this video, I'll explain the request and the limit in Azure Kubernetes cluster. So let's start. So AKS uses the request and the limit to control the resources such as CPU and memory for the container. So if you define the value of the CPU and memory in the request, then those resources will be immediately provided to the container. And this helps the scheduler to schedule the pod where the enough resources are available, which are defined in the request section which means the value defined in the request are taken care during the deployment of the pods and the containers. However, the values defined in the limits is the maximum threshold can container can use those resources. If the threshold is reached, then the restrictions will apply on CPU or the memory, which means the values defined in the limits are applied on the pods of the containers, which are already running with the minimum CPU and memory resources defined in the request. So what happens when the threshold is reached? Because you know the CPU is a compressible resource. So if the CPU threshold is reached, then the operating system will throttle, but it will keep on running. The new processes will not start, but the pod will not terminate. However, memory is a non-compressible resource, which means if the threshold of the memory is reached, then the pod will be terminated with the out of memory error. And if this keeps on happening, then the pod goes into the crash loop. So now we know how to define the requests and limits while creating the deployment or the pods. But the question here is, why do we require the request and limit? Let's assume a scenario. There are multiple pods running on a single node and suddenly one of the pod is over utilizing all the resources and it will start eating up all the CPU and the memory of the node and which will start impacting the other pods which are running on the same node. So this type of situation is called as the noisy neighbor situation where one of the pod which is running on the same node is impacting the performance of the other pods. So to control the resources of the pods, we define the requests and the limits. Uh, so I provided a snippet of the code where we de define the request and the limit. So in the container specification under the resources, you can see the request and the limits are defined. So either you can define the CPU memory or you can define both. So this is how you define the request and the limits while creating a deployment or the pods. So let's define the request and the limit in the demo. So I'll be using the same AKS demo cluster, which I have been using in the whole AKS series. And I've made a slight change here. So in the node pool, there is a single node pool and I have reduced the number of nodes from two to one. So now there is a single node running. So if you'll go to the node pool and click on scale node pool, you can see right now the virtual machine size is B2S, which is two virtual CPUs and four GB of memory. So first let's create a deployment by providing the request and the limits in the CPU and the memory. And if we'll scale the number of the pods, it should reach the threshold and the pod should not be scheduled. So let's check. I'm in the cloud shell, cube CTL, get nodes. So there is a single node. So let's create a deployment, deployment.yml. So I'm creating a deployment with the name of nginx deployment. And let's create a replica of one first. So we'll create one pod where in the container definition, I have defined the name of the container is nginx and it's using the nginx Microsoft image. And in the request is to finding the minimum requirement of one GB of memory and 0 0.3 CPUs. However, there are two CPUs which are available and there is a four GB memory available on the node, but the system resources are also running on this node. So they will also consume some CPU and memory. So let's deploy cube CTL apply hyphen F the name of the file and the deployment is created kubectl get deployment and the deployment is created let's check the pods and as you can see pod is running let's scale this deployment because now we provided one gb of memory it will reach to two so let's see kubectl scale replicas to three 
and the deployment deployment name so the deployment is scaled down there should be three pods running so let's check and as you can see the two different pods are in pending state and let's check what's the reason behind it describe the pod as you can see there is insufficient memory available and this is the reason scheduling has failed let's delete this and this time instead of the memory we will provide the more cpu and we'll check whether we'll get the same error for the cpu too so let's delete this deployment it should remove all the pods yep there are no pods running let's go back to the file again and this time let's give less memory 100 100 maybe bytes and 200 maybe bytes of limit for the cpu let's define one cpu and the limit is two cpu let's create this deployment again deployment is created let's check the pods and the pod is running now again let's scale the resources replica to three and scale and check the pods again the two pods are in pending state and what's the reason let's check describe pod and insufficient cpu because there are only two virtual cpus available and each pod should have minimum of one cpu as defined in the request so let's summarize the values defined in the request are taken care during the creation of the pod or deployment as the scheduler only schedule the pods if the required resources are available. However, in the case of the limits, if the pods are already running and they start utilizing the more CPU or the memory, then in, then in that case, limit threshold comes into picture and which will terminate the pod or throttle the pod. So that is all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.